Well, good Tuesday morning from the trail. It is still morning. It's about 11 o'clock. I haven't filmed. I've been on the trail since about 7.15. I haven't filmed this morning because the mosquitoes have been horrible. Oh my gosh, carry you away bad. Worst mosquitoes I think I've ever encountered while backpacking, and that includes the Sierras when Joe and I hiked out there. It's been horrible. But they've gotten better over the last mile or so. I was able to take my bug net off, and I had my rain jacket on because they were just swarming my arms and chewing me up. I took my rain jacket off. Feeling good. Look at this beautiful farm out here. Uh, I am approaching, I believe I'm on South Mount Wilcox, and I'm assuming that's North Mount Wilcox. I'm about uh, 10 miles, now nah, probably 9.5 miles outside Great Barrington, where I spent a Nero and a Zero, and frankly, I've pretty much consigned myself to never taking a Zero again. I don't do Zeros well. I just sit around and fidget, and no, I'm just... The only thing it's good for is I always take a good long nap on a, Z a Zero, so I do catch up on some sleep, and gosh, I probably napped two and a half hours yesterday. But other than that, again, I'm just not good at zeros. A zero is when you take a full day off of no hiking at all. A Nero, and I'm sure I've explained this to you before, but a Nero is when you hike some that day, but then you get into town or hostel or whatever and you don't hike anymore that day and you kind of rest. The beauty of the Nero is, of course, you get some miles in that day, but you still get a rest. The zero, of course, gives you a much fuller rest, but you don't get any hiking in whatsoever. Now, a lot of people use their zeros for fun activities and I guess if I had a tramway you know if I had a group of people that I was hiking with uh, you know we'd find fun stuff to do like Great Barrington had a swimming pool uh, at the community center which is just right down from the hotel where we were staying could have gone down there and hung out with some friends if I'd had a tramway with me but when you're all alone there's really not much to do uh, but I'm, I'm not one in fact both nights I had people stay with me in my hotel First night, my buddy Buffalo, who I've kind of flip-flopped with for, or leapfrogged with now for probably 300 miles, uh, spent the night with me. But he went out and back on the trail, so he just took a, a Nera. He went back out yesterday, and then last night, Easy, and the young lady he's hiking with, and I didn't ask him her name. I've met her a couple of times. They're both sweet people. They spent the night in the room. Uh, they had gotten into town, and we're going to stay at the community center and just camp out there, but I told them that I had an extra bed or two extra beds if they wanted to sleep with me. So they did. Uh, but I kind of left them to their own devices. You know, they've been hiking together for a while. I didn't want to intrude on their time together. But uh, been easier hiking this morning. I mean, we've had some steeper climbs, but it hasn't been really, really technical steep climbs like we had coming up Mount Everett. I know we'll have more of those in Massachusetts. And then, of course, that's what Vermont and New Hampshire and Southern Maine are all about it's technical climbs, but I've got about I don't know 60 probably 60 miles to Vermont So I think I'm gonna try to do that in another two and a half days Trying to make it there today's Tuesday make it there by Friday morning at the latest <clears throat> If I make it by Friday morning, I'm not I think it's Bennington and Vermont that we come to first in Vermont I'll probably take a Nero there. I need to get need to get some more socks. My these socks have a hole in them, and I can darn them, but it's about time to get a new pair anyway. And sometime in the next 50 miles or so, I'm gonna need to get a new pair of shoes. These are just about worn out. Other than that, it's just a routine morning. It's pretty. It's gonna be in the low 80s today, I think, and sunny. So I'll check in with you later. So I got to show you the coolest little trailside stand that folks have just set up here on the side of the road. It's kind of on an honor system thing. Nice picnic table here with some tap water. But look at this. This little shed. And inside, they have some chips and candy, cookies, Pop-Tarts. They have fresh eggs. But look at this. They have ices. And then they have soft drinks. And they even have a charging station if you need that. Really cool. And again, you just pay right here. They even had change because I just had a 10. I left them a little tip. Love it. This is so cool.
Oh, and they even have chalk here for you to write your name on. So I guess I'll write my name up here. I thought you guys would want to see this. That's really neat. Uh, and this is right here in front of their home. Alrighty, I think we're going to have to climb that in a little while. Uh, but it's late in the afternoon. I may not even make it up there today. I've already done 20, so I'm going to pick up another two or three, I think, and then find a place to camp. <clears throat> well, good Wednesday morning from the trail from Upper Goose Pond. I'm in Massachusetts, about 32, 33 miles into Massachusetts. Uh, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, this pond has a shelter, kind of an enclosed hut, that's manned by a caretaker. And uh, of course you can stay there. And I'm, I understand that there are canoes available to canoe on this pond. Uh, and additionally, Comments on Guthook says he makes breakfast for you. I'm not going to stay here because it's early morning and I've just gotten on trail. I was kind of trying to make it here last night. Uh, it was only about four and a half miles from where I camped, but a massive thunderstorm blew up out of nowhere and I had to throw my tent up in a hurry and hunker down. Otherwise, I would have been hiking in a dangerous... In fact, there was a severe thunderstorm warning, so I got my tent set up literally five seconds before it started raining. Thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, pretty hike so far this morning. I'll check in. Maybe I'll have a better view of the, of the pond later, and I'll check in then. So I'm about to cross over the massive Massachusetts Turnpike. It's going to be kind of noisy, so I thought I'd go ahead and let you know what I'm doing. I'm not really sure uh, where it goes to, where it comes from. It looks like it's going... Obviously, east to west. I'm sure it probably goes into Boston. I think Boston, I'm told, is two and a half hours or so east of here. Oh, look at that beautiful sky. A beautiful cloud structure over the mountain. Wow, this is a beautiful morning. Isn't that gorgeous? Thank you, Lord, for sunrises. Whew. All right, I'll check in later. Well, I'm coming into the town of Dalton, Massachusetts. The trail goes right through town. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna eat something here. I'm gonna resupply here. Probably wind up spending the night. There's a gentleman that allows hikers to stay on his lawn. I'm just gonna have to find him. Um, looks like the trail goes straight ahead. I am convinced. Excuse me for a second. Massachusetts mountains are nothing but mud. It is unbelievable how muddy those mountains are. Uh, I'll check in later when I find uh, something more interesting in this. Beautiful little town though. Love the architecture. Well, good morning from the trail. And yes, <laughs> this is the trail. The AT goes right through the town of Dalton. Dalton is a beautiful little town here in Massachusetts. I've, I got in, had a good uh, long hike yesterday, got in about five o'clock, 5.15. There's a gentleman here who hosts hikers at night, Tom Lavardi, super nice guy. Let you throw a tent up in his yard and gosh, he even prepared snacks and just a really, really super nice guy. We're really so grateful to him. But uh, the trail goes through town for a little over a mile before it gets back into the mountains. Uh, but you might want to see, it's a beautiful little town. I love the architectural style. Uh, the plan for today is to get up and over Mount Greylock as quickly as possible. We're gonna be hiking in rains and most of the day. The rains are going to start around midday and it's supposed to rain for about 24 hours. So, uh, not my favorite thing to do, but you got to do what you got to do. And my rain jacket got a tear in the sleeve the other day when I had a little tumble on the trail. 
so it's not going to be completely waterproof, but at least it's just my sleeve. It's you know, not my torso, so it won't be that big a deal. Uh, but I will check in later. Massachusetts and really New England as a whole has a lot of these little natural alpine ponds on top of these little mountains. And I should do a little more research. Excuse me, let me get this some of this dew off the lens. There, that's better. Uh, sometimes you get a view of them, sometimes you don't. You can kind of see them through the trees, but you can see them well this morning. Julia Hughes, this is for you. You hear the banjo frogs? I know how much you love bullfrogs. Checking in later. Well, I'm nearing the uh, pinnacle or summit of Mount Greylock. Look at this cool little pond. And there's even a cool little shed on it. I've seen this on several videos before. This is beautiful. For some reason, I thought this was, this was in Vermont. Uh, got a little less than half a mile to the summit, so I'm gonna push on and get you some views from up there. So this is the summit of Mount Greylock. Tallest point in Massachusetts. I think it's 3,200 and some odd feet. I'll take you with me up there. It's beautiful. That's a Bascom Lodge. I'm gonna run out here and grab something to drink. Looks kind of cool, they have the AT symbol embedded in the sidewalk. This looks like the same sculpture that did the Wright Brothers monument. I don't know if you did or not. Very similar architectural style. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 3,400, 3,491 feet. I'm gonna take some photos, run down to the Bascom Lodge. It's actually cool up here. I'm gonna try to hit the shelter in the next two and a half, three hours. I think it's 6.7. Hopefully get there before it starts raining. Checking in later. Well, good Friday morning from the trail. I am uh, about four and a half miles north of Mount Greylock. And I'm either on Mount Prospect, uh, yeah, I think I'm on Mount Prospect, or near uh, the summit to Mount Prospect. But I got this beautiful view this morning. It has been, since about 2 o'clock yesterday, massive, massive showers and thunder showers. The winds howled last night. I stayed at the Bascom Lodge right there at Mount Greylock. I hadn't planned on it. It was only about 17 and a half miles, but I checked the forecast. And the forecast showed a severe thunderstorm system that was going to blow through. And true to prediction, it was uh, it was terrible. So, spent the night there. Got up early this morning, hit the trail about 6 o'clock. And this is what I'm greeted with this morning. This is just absolutely, oh my gosh, thank you. Lord. What a beautiful morning. I'm just so blessed. So blessed to be here. A beautiful town down there. Not really sure what town that is. It could be Bennington, Vermont. Uh, that's my destination today, Bennington. No, I doubt that's the Bennington, because Bennington is still like 15 miles. But uh, anyway, beautiful town. It's a beautiful view. If the clouds will lift, I think, let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. That that may be all Massachusetts. I was going to say, some of that may be Vermont, some may be Mass. Hard to tell. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful nonetheless, so I'll check in later. Thanks. Well, I am walking down the streets of North Adams, Massachusetts. Came out of the Mount Greylock, we'll call it Mount Greylock Wilderness. <laughs> Not really a wilderness, but uh, came off of Mount Greylock, which is way back up there. Now I'm heading up into this next little series of hills which should get me over into Vermont. Uh, I'm only about, I think, four miles from the Vermont-Massachusetts border. 
God, it feels so good this morning. <laughs> I am so blessed. It's probably in the high 60s with a nice, clear, go cool breeze. It feels so good. I think I said this yesterday when I was going through Cheshire. Uh, it might have been the, was it the day before. No, no, it was yesterday. I love it when you go through town. I know some hikers don't. I think it's so cool when the trail goes through town, but then goes back up into the mountains. Kind of gives you a well, just a different perspective on things. The Appalachian Trail is about the Appalachian community, which includes the towns as well as the mountains. We shouldn't forget that. Oh, I'll check in later. I really detest whining on trail. <laughs> but Massachusetts was all um, sorry, I lost my train of thought entirely. Massachusetts was all mud bogs. Now, Vermont is just the same. And I don't, I know I took pictures when I got to Vermont, but I don't think I filmed anything there. Oh, uh, yeah, I've been in Vermont for about six tenths of a mile. Woohoo! And I am tickled to be here. Don't get me wrong, but golly! That's kind of what happens to your shoes. I mean, your shoes almost get yanked off your feet. If it weren't for my um, gaiters, I probably would have lost my shoes two or three times already in the mud, but... Fortunately, the gators hold on just enough that it doesn't suck your shoe off. Ah, but anyway, yes, I'm in Vermont. Uh, about 12, 12 or 13 miles from Bennington, Vermont. I don't think I'll make that today only because I don't really want to. I want to kind of set myself up there for a... I don't know. I think it's going to be a Nero in tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. I don't want to take a whole lot of time in town, but... I'm trying to arrange um, getting new shoes and some new socks, getting my packages, uh, getting my winter stuff sent back to me because I know we're going to get some cold temps pretty soon. So uh, I might have to spend several hours in Bennington trying to accomplish all that. I could go in tonight, uh, and I might... Because I'm kind of running low on food. That's intentional, though. I didn't want to be carrying a lot of food up and over Greylock yesterday. I didn't. But it just means that I'll be really cutting it close with food. So i got to be careful. Who knows? Maybe I'll hit some trail magic today. Uh, I called Andy Oliver when I got to, to um, Vermont because... We came up here on a mission trip, I don't know, 10 years or so ago, to, I believe it's the town of Rutland, Vermont. Now, the AT doesn't go through Rutland, but it gets close enough that Rutland is one of the trail towns that will... Can you hear that? Oh, it's squishing. One of the trail towns that will resupply him at least. In fact, I may meet Jonathan there, because there's a train from New York that comes right to Rutland. Excuse me. I can't keep in mind what I'm doing because I'm trying not to tumble in the mud. Uh, but anyway, I'll check in later. We'll get uh, more of a report of what's going on. And once again, in my haste <laughs> to head on down the trail, I missed a um, significant mile marker. I missed a 1600 mile marker. Uh, it was about four tenths of a mile beyond the Massachusetts Vermont border. Just missed it entirely. I'm about a mile and a half beyond it. So, this is my official 1600 mile mark right here. Isn't it beautiful? Woohoo! Well, good Saturday morning from the trail. This was my campsite last night. Beautiful view from Harmon Hill looking down. I guess I'm looking, yeah, looking down on the town of Bennington, Vermont. I'll be down there in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Taking a Nero in the little hotel down there. I'm going to 
get myself ready for new shoes and socks and more gear that I need to fight the battle of the mud. But look, there's an obelisk down there. I have no idea what that is. I'll find out when I get to town. Check it in later.